Your first technique is going to show side strokes. Label your page in your sketchbook with the word side strokes. Side strokes use just the side of the pastel stick. On the page that you've labeled as side strokes, make a few side strokes using just the side of the chalk pastel. The second technique you are going to put in your sketchbook for chalk pastel is firm strokes. In your sketchbook, write the words firm strokes. To use the firm strokes technique, use just the corner of your pastel stick or an edge, and you'll just use firm pressure to make a line. So I'm pushing down hard and that is a firm stroke. So on that page for firm strokes, make a few firm strokes. The next technique you're going to put in your sketchbook for chalk pastel is tapered strokes. Write the words tapered strokes in your sketchbook. For tapered strokes, you'll do a firm stroke first, and then at the end of the stroke, you're going to twist and turn and lift up the pastel stick. So starting with a firm stroke where I put in a lot of pressure on the chalk stick to the paper, that's a firm stroke, and now I'm going to lift and twist. As you can see, the end of the line is now tapered, whereas the rest of it is a uniform thickness until the end it gets thinner. Each one of these is a tapered stroke. Using a firm stroke first, and then twisting and lifting towards the end. The next technique you will show in your sketchbook is called random strokes. Please write the words random strokes in your sketchbook. Where you've written random strokes, the technique uses a very loose grip on the pastel stick. Notice with firm strokes and tapered strokes, I was gripping it as if I would a pencil with a firm grip towards the end of the pastel. With random strokes, you need to hold it very loosely, but not so loose that you drop it. The reason you're going to hold it loosely is when you draw with it, you're allowing the pastel stick to move within your fingers. You want to try to move around the page in a non-predictable way. Essentially, it's going to look like scribbling, but you're allowing the pastel stick to add to the randomness of the lines. If you drop the stick, simply pick it up again. Make sure that your random strokes go in different directions. Finally, for where you've put your random strokes in your sketchbook, make sure that there's one area where you have put in more layers of random strokes on top of one area than on another. In your sketchbook, complete random strokes.
The next technique you're going to show with chalk pastel in your sketchbook is varying pressure. Please write the words varying pressure in your sketchbook. On the same page where you've written varying pressure, you're going to show this technique. Holding the pastel stick with a firm stroke first, then pushing as hard as you can for that first stroke. After that, you're going to gradually use less and less pressure until you can barely see a line. That's varying pressure. If you see that there's too much of a difference from one to the other, see if you can control the amount of pressure that you're using to fill in the difference. In your sketchbook, please complete some lines to show varying pressure. Please write the words cross-hatching in your sketchbook. On the same page that you've written cross-hatching, you'll be showing the technique. For this one, pick three colors of your choice. It can be any three colors you like. I like to pick colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. Those are analogous colors. They usually are very similar. So I've chosen blue, this kind of light aqua color, and green. For cross-hatching, what you'll do is start with any color first that you've chosen and using firm strokes to make lines going in the same direction. Then you're going to switch colors and do firm strokes in a different direction, crossing over each other. So the lines that go in one direction, that is a hatch. And when you cross them, that is cross hatch. So I've chosen my third color and I'm going in a third different direction over them. Now what you'll see with chalk pastel with the cross hatching is as I've layered over the previous lines, it has blurred and blended those colors together. So you can see that these are very smooth transitions of color versus the very clean, crisp lines of the individual firm strokes. What you'll do at this point is continue using the different colors. So I've gone back to green. I'm going in a fourth direction now. I'm going to choose a fifth direction. And if your lines go a little crooked, that's okay. The idea is to layer the different colors together If you go out of order from the way you started, that's okay. What you'll find is by using different colors and different directions with the cross hatching technique, the colors will blend together even more and it's going to create a texture. This is a good technique to use if you're wanting to create a rough texture or the texture of fabric. Continue doing this technique until you see that there are no more gaps in between your hatches or your lines, your firm strokes. On the page that you have labeled as cross hatching, use your three colors to create the cross hatching technique. This next technique is called pointillism or stippling.
please write pointillism slash stippling in your sketchbook. On the same page that you've written pointillism slash stippling, you're going to show this technique. As a warning, this technique can get very loud and noisy. Please do not intentionally make more noise than is necessary. But be aware that those in the class doing the pointillism or stippling technique cannot help a certain level of noise, as you'll see that I'm about to demonstrate in a moment. What I would like you to do now is choose two colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel. So you can choose red and green, blue and orange, or purple and yellow. I'm going to choose red and green. Choose one color, use a firm grip, and make dots on the page. If you see that they look more like lines, try to find more of a corner on your stick. Make your dots in a small grouping. With your second color that's opposite on the color wheel, which is a complementary color, you're going to make dots in a circle next to that. Now in between, almost like a Venn diagram, you're going to overlap your second color where you've already placed your first color. Alternate colors to fill in the space. Don't worry about being too accurate to fill in every gap. I'm going to zoom in so you can see some of the resulting color. Close up, you can still see separate green and red, but from a distance, and the camera might not capture it, from a distance, those are going to look like they've mixed and created a brown, gray, or black color. That's due to the science of light and how your eyes work that your eyes are trying to mix red and green together in your sight and your brain's translating that as a new color. If you've ever seen those vision tests where they have the dots and you have to try to find the hidden number in it, usually they use complementary colors because of that way that the eyes blend. It's also a way to tell if you're colorblind. The next technique in your sketchbook is called feathering. Please write the word feathering in your sketchbook. On the page that you've written feathering, you're going to use at least two different colors. I like to use colors that are almost complementary or that are not too close together on the color wheel. So I've chosen this aqua blue and this red. You'll take your first color and use a firm stroke or a tapered stroke to make some lines. I like to use tapered strokes for this and you'll see why in just a moment. Next, I'm going to take my second color and overlap using tapered strokes. Continue alternating your colors. And just like everything else with chalk pastel that you overlap, it's going to blend the colors together.
The important thing for feathering is that you are using these strokes in the same direction and that you overlap them to mix the colors together. I'm going to use a third color to show you that there are options with feathering as well to create different effects. Feathering is a good technique for grass or foliage, for fur. or for simply blending colors in one area, depending on how you do it. In your sketchbook, please complete the feathering technique.